Hey everybody, it's James. Welcome back to Urban Jungle MSP. So in today's video, I'm going to do a continuation of my last video talking a little bit more about my Hoya Compacta Mauna Loa, which had mealybugs. But before we get started, I wanted to shout out to a couple organizations. First of all, Bauhaus Brew Labs for having these amazing t-shirts. Um, Bauhaus is where we hosted our houseplant hoppy hour a couple of months ago back in January and I love their beer and they have super cool merch so that's where I got this t-shirt and today I'm going to be drinking an Indeed Mexican Honey Light as we are filming. Uh, Indeed has a bunch of beers that I like as well so that's what I'm gonna have. This is the last of my variety pack from them that I got at the beginning of quarantine a month ago so I'm I'm doing all right uh, with not drinking too much. So cheers. If you watched my last video, you saw that I had to basically massacre my Hoya Compacta Mauna Loa because it had mealybugs. And unfortunately, I just kept finding more. So after the video, I inspected further and I just kept finding more and more mealybugs. So this is the current state of affairs. Uh, with the Hoya Compacta Mauna Loa. She's pretty bare, but I am pretty like 99.8% sure that she's mealy free now because I went through and I took off a lot of foliage on this plant. And this is pretty drastic considering this plant had super long tendrils, but I don't mess around with mealy bugs. They're a pest that I do not want to deal with. Um, and especially on a plant like this. This plant is so susceptible to mealybugs because it can hide in the little teeny tiny cracks and crevices. So I'm doing my best to try to restart this plant and make it happy and healthy for the rest of its life. So that's, that's that. As I mentioned in my last video, I did take a bunch of cuttings to propagate this plant. And I wanted to do a little follow up about that. So. I'm gonna pull my trusty little autumn in here. I have my little potting tub because we're gonna do a little potting later. But to follow up, this is the little glass that I have with some LECA and these cuttings. And so far, I haven't seen any roots developing on any of these cuttings. So nothing's going on on this guy. We have a couple of roots here. Okay, so this is good news. This LECA seems to be working at least for one. And then let's see about these last two. Some root nodes developing, but nothing serious on this guy. And nothing on this. So, so far, just rooting in LECA with a glass. Mixed results. So that's that. I'm just going to push these back in here. And I'm actually going to save this one. I'm going to take this one out because this has a nice healthy little root going on there. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but there's a root there. So that's good. I'm going to save this one. I'm just going to make sure I double check to inspect that we don't have any mealybugs living in any of these cracks and crevices. All right, seriously, this plant, like I said before, you don't want to get mealybugs in because you have to literally inspect every single leaf and every little crotch of the leaves just to make sure that they're gone. And this is, it's annoying and it takes a long time, but it's worth it. Okay, so I'm gonna save this guy. I'm gonna put this aside. The second propagation method I was using for this one, um, I had taken some cuttings and I used this to-go container method. I love the to-go container because it creates a little mini greenhouse so you can see all this condensation that's building up on the lid and that's because the moisture inside creates this little like ecosphere which is super cool and if you order Thai food takeout you can get this for free. It's a great way to reuse your takeout containers and you can't recycle black plastic so it's really important that you can find a different way to reuse this as opposed to throwing it away and having it in a landfill forever. So that's what I'm doing. Now I did check on these and I noticed that the pieces that I had stuck deeper into Waka had started rooting so that's a great sign. The Pieces that I have just sitting on top of LECA have not done as well. But for example, 
this piece right here. This piece was stuck down in Lekka and you can see that the roots came out a lot quicker because they were in contact and were uh, directly touching a lot of moisture. So they had something to seek out versus the pieces that I had rooting on top. So the the Lekka takeout container, I am going to leave and wait for these to root a little bit more. I kind of want to experiment a little bit with Lekka. I've had mixed success with it, um, but let me see if there are some other pieces in here. Um, there's a teeny tiny root on this guy that's starting. I'm just going to gently shove that back down in there. Um, yeah, like I said, some of these pieces that are laying on top haven't done as much, so I'm just going to shove these down a little bit further here into the lock up. And I do want to mention, I took most of these cuttings down to one node because it's a lot easier for a plant to be able to produce roots if it has less material to sustain. So if you think about it, it's going to use way less energy trying to sustain a single node with like one or two leaves versus trying to root a whole strand. That takes a lot of effort and work for the plant. So this makes it a little bit easier. And as you can see, we're already getting some results and this has only been like a week or two. So that's a good sign. So I'm gonna leave these guys in here. Next up, I have this bag, which I have um, some potting soil in the bottom of, and then I have the single node cutting stuck in here. Now this is the little Ziploc propagation method that I've learned and have used with a lot of success. So let's see what kind of roots we have down in here. Like I said, these have been in here for a week or two and I'm already seeing roots, so this is a good sign. Uh, okay, so we have two cuttings here that are like completely rooted. So that's amazing. Um, how else are we doing? A healthy root system here. Uh, super healthy root system here. I'm going to assume that all of these are in really good shape. This is such a good sign because I was so disappointed when this plant was infested with mealybugs. Um, I paid quite a bit from a woman. Oh, yeah, good, good roots here. See, this is a testament to why you should do single note cuttings. Uh, I paid a lot of money for that plant and I wanna make sure that, look at that. Okay, we're sustaining life, this is good. It looks like all these have rooted. So if you haven't tried the Ziploc propagation method, this is awesome. So, okay, this is a really good sign. So what I'm gonna do is actually pop up some of these rooted cuttings into a pot. So I have this little pot here, and what I'm going to do is use my Hoya mix. Now here I have a mix of just a general organic potting soil and some orchid bark, and the orchid bark is very similar to the Hoya's natural environment. They grow in the crotches of trees and in um, tropical areas, so you wanna make sure that you mimic that environment as much as possible. What I'm going to do is pot all of these together. So excuse the spreading situation that I'm gonna have going on right here. So, okay, so I have my little setup here. I have my little potting tub. I love this. If you don't have a potting tub, you should get one because it's super helpful for all of your little projects. But I'm just gonna mix up my potting soil here. Oops, gotta cut it in there. Uh, my potting soil with my orchid bark and my all-purpose organic potting mix. Now, I've found that over the last couple of months, I was adding Lekka and a ton of orchid bark into my Hoya mix, but some of my plants aren't doing as well as I had like, anticipated. So I am adding more organic potting soil into my mixes now, just because I think that it's going to let them stay a little bit more moist, as opposed to drying out too quickly. So this is a good mix. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of chunky orchid bark as well as that, um, as well as that potting soil here. So that's good. So I have this little paper towel here, and I typically tend to put paper towel in the bottom of all of the pots that I use because I don't like when soil comes rushing through. And this breaks down over time, so it's not a big deal. But anyway. 
you can just put a little bit of um, either paper towel or if you have a coffee filter that works too, just something to prevent the soil from rushing out. Time for a little beer break. Uh, Mexican honey white, if I didn't say so before. So anyway, we're gonna take some of these cuttings here. These are all rooted so quick. Now I would say if you want, you can wait a little bit longer, but these guys are doing so well that I'm going to pot them all together so that they don't have as much transplant shock. The longer that you wait, especially if you're like water rooting, the longer that you wait to transplant a plant that's been in some type of substrate and then you're changing it to another, the harder time typically the cuttings have to adapting. So doing this sooner might be good or it may totally fail. So I'll keep you updated on that. Um, but I'm just gonna take more of these here. These are incredible. Like this is insane. These are all just intertwined and growing together already. And we're gonna make a nice full four inch pot. So I have my substrate here that I'm just gonna plop down in the bottom of this pot. And I am using plastic. I'm typically a pretty big advocate of terracotta, but like I mentioned earlier, my hoys have been drying out so quickly because we've had so much more sun here in Minnesota. So I am switching more to the plastic bandwagon. And a lot of times we get these nursery pots like with plants that we're buying and it's a great way to reuse and reduce our consumption. So that's always good as well. What do we have going on here? These are two cuttings that are stuck together. So I'm just plopping these down in here and then I'm going to take some soil and wait on this one. So many roots, they just can you believe this? So I'm just gonna pop these down in here. And like I said, these were all one node cuttings, either one or two with only a couple of leaves. So yeah, I think this is gonna be really successful. Pop these down in here. We're gonna have a nice full four inch pot of Hoya Compacta Monaloa. And this was a plant I looked for forever, and then luckily I was just putting it into the universe and I ended up finding one locally um, in a super mature plant. So that was really exciting and I'm glad that I'm able to save some of this. And I'm glad that I propagated. I was on the fence about it, but it's so hard to control mealybugs that I just figured I'm going to cut my risk here and know that I can save at least some of it. these in here. Now the tricky part, I wish I had a spoon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get a spoon. Just a second. All right, so I'm just gonna use a spoon to kind of get the soil down into the cracks and crevices here. Just making sure that all these roots are covered. in there. My plants have been giving me a really nice reprieve. I hope everybody's doing okay with the pandemic situation. The coronavirus is something that I'm taking very seriously. Um, I'm fortunate that I can work from home part-time, so I've been doing like a day and a half in the office and then working from home. Since I work in HR, I do have to do new higher onboarding, so I am in on Mondays to do that. Um, but anyway, the rest of the time I've been working from home. So it's been great to be here with my plants and then they provide me with some projects to do in the evening so I don't feel super bored. I'm really lucky today was, is you might be able to see the sun is coming in, it's gorgeous here in Minnesota. So I took a, a nice 17 mile bike ride trying to stay as far away from people as possible, but it's really nice that we have, at least have the opportunity to enjoy nature during this. So I'm just going to get all the soil down in here. And then you can just tamp, tamp the little pot to make sure that the soil gets down in. And it looks like we need a little bit more here. And now, now that you've transferred your cuttings, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this stays evenly moist because 
With the cuttings being in this environment, it was an ideal situation. So you're gonna wanna make sure that the soil stays pretty evenly moist as these continue to root. You could pop a Ziploc bag on top of this, or if you have like a clear jar to put over, you could do that as well to mimic the situation that it had in the Ziploc bag. What I'm going to do is put a plastic bag on top of this and leave it under one of my grow lights because that's the environment that it had in the plastic bag and that seemed to work really well. So here are our little rooted cuttings. Now if you are dealing with mealybugs, you can always propagate your plant and just make sure that there's no mealybugs left on the pieces that you propagate because you want to make sure you eradicate that. So I'm giving this little plant the opportunity to begin anew. Um, I have some pieces here that are tip cutting, so those already, like they don't have to redevelop a new stem, which is good, so that'll be a little bit less shock for them, but I'm just hoping that this works well. I've only rooted uh, non-variegated new rope before, so we'll see, we'll see how this works. Um, Obviously, we had good results from the plastic bag propagation method, so that's great news. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm noticing some holes to fill in here. But there you go, a little pot of Hoya, Hindu rope, Mauna Loa. This goes by so many names. Hindu rope, Hoya compacta, Hoya kernels compacta, Hoya rope. But this is Hoya compacta, Mauna Loa, so you all know. So there's that. Um, so that was from some cuttings that I had already started to propagate. But if you have a Hoya Compacta and you want to make cuttings, um, so this is just a bag with more cuttings from this plant after I like massacred it. Uh, basically, all you really have to do, so you take a segment of the plant, and what I did for my initial cuttings is just cut down and I found two nodes so the nodes are where the leaves grow out of so you can see here there's one and then there's two so I'm gonna cut right above that second node and this is gonna look painful because this is a really sought-after plant but this is necessary to do so I'm gonna take the lower leaves and cut them off so that you just have this little guy here so you have the single, well this is a double note cutting. Um, you're gonna just take this and then plop it into the soil into your little Ziploc bag propagation. And like I mentioned before, this is a lot less energy to try to propagate than this for this plant. So even if you like remove the lower couple leaves and exposed a few nodes, this is gonna take way more energy for the plant to reproduce than this. So you're just setting the plant up for success. You'll have to be patient because it's going to take a while for this to become a long, beautiful trailing plant, but at least you know that you've defeated daily bugs with this situation. So anyway, if you have any questions, just feel free to let me know. You can always find me on Instagram as well, at Urban Jungle MSP, and that's really the easiest way to send me a direct message. So anyway, that's that. If you have any questions, like I said, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. And make sure to support your local businesses through the coronavirus. Stay safe, stay healthy, drink some good beer or non-alcoholic beverage if you um, do not consume alcohol, and just take it easy. Um, I have heard many times that people are like, you should get your side hustle going and try to be productive with all this extra time you have. If you have that extra energy, great. But if you're somebody like me who is stressed about the pandemic and just wants to make sure that you get through and as healthy as possible, it's okay to just relax. And if plants do that for you like they do for me, great. Um, but that being said, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Urban Jungle MSP. Like and comment, subscribe, and do all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. So cheers.